This is Chloe Cast, Episode 6, Seeking a Plotagon Replacement and Other Stories. Hello gamers, everyone here in Zorch Central. Uh, I'm looking for a replacement for Plotagon. I am really constrained by the limitations of that platform. There's, I, I can't do anything with it. As you've seen how it works before, where it's basically you're just writing a script. There's just two characters in the scene. They can't walk around or do anything. And I need something different. And I can't really afford subscriptions to use the other two services that are similar to it, which are on normal, which used to be extra normal, and um, go animate. So I'm looking around to find if there is anything else to use because I feel creatively constrained by the fact that it is so limited in what you can do. I mean, you could have, you know, a variety of music and sound effects that play a little bit, but the way that Plotagon works, it's really limited. And what you're able to do with it. I mean, it's amazing I've been able to keep the show going, Chloe and Professor going as long as I have, using something that's so constrained. You can't have characters move around the scene. You have just basic emotions. I started doing the voiceovers, which is help, which helped. But when you export out a video which it's not really even an export what it does is it renders it and then it uploads it to their servers to their social network it's a part of the the app it renders it at a really low resolution really low quality resolution it records audio at a low quality it's not cd audio quality it's not 44 it's not uh 44.1 hertz CD audio it's more like 22 lower quality and unlike uh, the other tools that are out there you cannot use your own audio files you have to record it right then so I just type what the character is going to say so that there's some words for me to read while I record the dialogue and then it just moves them the lips and that's it that's really it so I'm looking at other possibilities and that would mean fewer episodes because if I have to use something like uh, source filmmaker or or even something like Miku Miku dance I would have to save up money to get character, you know, character models made. Now, I'm no, I'm no artist for making character models. So I'd have to get character models made of all the characters that I've created for the show. And that would, uh, that would be up there, expensive. So... I'm still gonna do the show using what I've got. Not like I'm gonna stop doing Chloe and the Professor, although it, it seems like I have. Um, I've, I've actually been working on ideas for the next episode, and I've, I've pretty much got that pinned down, so that will be coming fairly soon. And this, I like the way, the fact that I'm not just pushing myself to get a new episode ever out every week that it gives me time to think about exactly it gives me a, a chance to really think about exactly what I want to say what kind of message I want to convey with the show and this upcoming episode will be about how AAA game development really needs to change and this is this has been a subject that's been going around a lot 
lately, uh, especially with you know the latest you know Mass Effect falling apart, as it seems, because I think AAA game development has reached its pinnacle, and it's an untenable. It's a it is what another person has coined it as being an unwinnable arms race. It's good, you know, to have really good games, great um, soundtracks, lots of um, cut scenes and everything. There's nothing wrong with that. But the games are getting bigger and bigger budgets. And you would expect the quality to go up. You'd expect them to get better, but they're not. It seems that the bigger and bigger the budgets get, the lower and lower the quality goes. Like we saw what happened with um, this game. It's, it's, it has a big budget and it was a big AAA title and it had animation issues and it had all sorts of other problems. and. So we may not get another Mass Effect game for a long time. This this may have killed off the Mass Effect franchise with how with how um, badly it was received. I mean, this may have killed off that franchise, and it might even kill off Bioware because EA sheds off companies where this happens i call it the ea effect and i when i saw what happened with mass effect andromeda i knew yeah the ea effect has taken effect in bioware we're probably not going to see bioware last too much longer they're going to go the same way as maxis did the same way bullfrog did the same way most other companies that get swallowed up by ea usually go they usually end up disappearing they usually end up being destroyed and their ips get turned into a crappy phone app where you have to pay money for turns i'm referring to i'm referring to the Dungeon Keeper phone app, which I am still torqued over. But it's a unsust it is an unsustainable arms race. Someone else coined it as that. And they're right. It is. It's an unsustainable arms race. Where you're supposed to be seeing with the budgets increasing, you're supposed to be seeing a better game. But we're not seeing that. We're not getting improvements with bigger budgets. We're seeing worse problems, animation issues. We're seeing problems with gameplay. We're basic stuff that should have been caught during the QA portion of the development. Stuff that could have been, you know, found with some beta testing, some basic play testing. And we haven't seen any of that. There's no, absolutely no example of that. It's like their, their QA was basically, does the game run at all? Well, it, it runs. Does it run okay? Well, we just, we just want to make sure it runs at all. So we can sell it. And that's the way it's, that's the way it's been starting, to, that's the way it's been going. That's the way it's been heading. And as I said many times in the past, as I said many times in the past, I think there's going to be a crash in the video game industry. Now it's not gonna be like the crash that was that I lived through during the 80s with the game industry completely collapsing you know, console industry completely collapsing, it's not going to be that. It's going to be a triple A crash. Because the gaming industry is just way too big 
It makes way too much money. It's, it's much too big to collapse at this point. It makes more money than Hollywood. But the AAA studios, yeah, they, they, they're falling apart. And we're seeing indie studios coming out that are starting to make games that make them look bad. Now, The Witcher 3. Technically, CD Projekt Red, they, they may be a corporation, they may sell stock. You may be able to buy stock in CD Projekt Red. They may be able to corporatize. I don't like, I don't like the fact that they're a corporation, but they are technically an indie studio. And The Witcher 3, the quality of that game, you know, puts a lot of other titles at shame to shame. I mean, the level of detail in it, the quality of the storytelling, everything just put a lot of other games to shame. A lot of other game franchises to shame. And, you know, that just exemplifies what we're talking about here with this. It, it, it's a good example of what we're trying to say, what we're trying to convey. And you have other small developers coming out and starting to make really big games. And that their quality is really going through, really going up. Their budgets are going up, but their quality is going up as well. Whereas the AAA studios, Activision, Electronic Arts, their, their budgets are ballooning. Their quality is going through the sewer. Why is that? And that's why development in those studios needs to change. Now, how, what did, what can they do different? They would have to take a long, hard look at the choices that they are making. Why are those budgets blowing up to such massive proportions? And even though their budgets are so high, why is it then that the finished product that they release is of such poor quality? They're just throwing money into something that's ultimately not going to uh, do well. So they have to take a long, hard look at exactly how they're developing their games, what they're doing. We know that EA is almost, it's almost a video game development sweatshop where they don't have many breaks. They have extremely tight schedules. And that is probably a part of the problem. You have a high, you, you have a high stress environment already. A very high stress environment. And you're putting the people in there and you're expecting them to perform in a high stress environment. Anyone that's been in business, and even I've seen it myself, you put people in a high stress environment and you just keep building it on and building it on and building it on and not giving them a way to uh, to get rid of that stress not finding ways to uh, alleviate it your productivity your quality of your work is going to go through the floor what a lot of businesses do not understand is that when you put your people under a lot of stress under a lot of pressure you might get more work out of them but the quality of that work is going to significantly suffer. You need quality over quantity. And a lot of businesses just don't understand this. They don't understand it. They need to be made to understand it. That you know, if you work these people to death, a great game is something you're not gonna get out the, at the end. You need to give them some breathing room. You need to let them, you know, sit and, and think for a while of what they're doing instead of just rushing into it 
and going, oh, we're going to do this and this and this and this and this and this. Let's get it done. And games built by committee are also usually end up being pretty terrible. So these are the these are the things that need to change. Now what it will what the companies will look like, how game development will look once they implement some kind of change or even if they change. Well that is completely up to them. There's no one definitive way that they can make things better. It would what would best suit them for their style of making games. One of the things I think they should do is stop trying to push out a brand new game of a franchise once every once every year. That's just too much. I mean even even Activision understands that they can't have you know the same company every year pushing out the same game in the franchise. What they've done is they've taken different companies that they own and they've given them um, a version of Call of Duty that they work on. Even they understood, okay, we put these people under this kind of constraint, under this kind of pressure, the game's gonna suffer terribly. Even they recognized that. EA doesn't. Most of the battlefield development is done by DICE. And DICE is also doing a lot of other stuff. They're doing the Star Wars Battlefront. So... So changing how they develop, probably also getting away from yearly updates to franchises. Ubisoft is getting away from that. There, we haven't had a new Assassin's Creed in a while since you know, Syndicate. But there's a new one on the way. And I think because the fact that they are getting away from, you know, pushing out these new franchises quickly is that we're going to get a better Assassin's Creed out of it. At least we can hope that they do. Hope that we get a better Assassin's Creed. You know, we can, we can hope. But anyway, that's everything that I wanted to let you guys know what's going on. I am looking for alternatives to Plotagon because it is so limited. You can, you can get Plotagon on your phone and, and check it out yourself. And what you're able to do with it is so limited compared to what else is out there. But I can afford the monthly fees for GoAnimate and, uh, and Normal, which would work really well. Go animate would work really well for Chloe and the Professor. I'd been wanting to possibly do an animated, the different style animation for Chloe and the Professor. Uh, now, Namo would give me the ability to do the similar animation I'm doing already and have somewhat better models than what Plotagon offers and be able to do a lot more, be able to move around, be able to use higher qual of uh, be able to use audio files higher quality audio files be able to do a lot more with the kind of stories and the kind of episodes i want to be able to do but it's really expensive and it's a monthly thing and you now this channel doesn't make any money and you know, so I'm just using what I'm using. And I'm not in a hurry to start, you know, making buku bucks on the channel. I know that it takes a while to build things up. And I'm also excessively lazy. And a, uh, I'm the god king of procrastination. But, yeah, I'm also... 
you know, I also like to create things. And when the tools I'm given to create are so limited, I feel constrained. I feel strangled. So that's the point where I'm at right now. So the next episode will be coming soon. Next episode of Chloe and the Professor will be coming soon. And uh, I think it's also why I feel so constrained with gamers. I had a vision for the show. Okay, that was my phone. I had a vision for the show. And the limitations of Plotagon were really getting in the way. I had, there was so much more I wanted to be able to do with that show, and Plotagon is so limited in what you can have your characters do, that I can't create with it. I can't do that show with Plotagon. Basically, when I find something new, when I find something that I can use other than Plotagon, that's when gamers will finally come back. As for right now, I, I it's just too limited. Plotagon is too limited for me to be able to do gamers. So, I've been Mike. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. As I've, I've been getting better. You notice. I've, I've been doing these... You know, I have trouble with nervous issues talking in public and i've been wanting to get away from that getting rid of that it's like i can talk to another person just fine but when i start getting into groups or even when get in front of the camera and i start talking it's like certain things in my I, I words start locking up in my head and you notice me pausing because it takes a while for up to just pop into my head it's like I want to get away from I want to get over that problem and I've been improving significantly so this is actually helping me out and I've made some format changes to some of the I've made format changes to some of the shows that I'm doing over on Gamers Bay where I will actually I'm actually doing a series on arcade games from the 80s that are in the Atari Vault game over in, that's available on Steam. So I've been doing a showcase of those like every week and I've changed the format to where I'm actually in front of the camera talking about the game before getting into the gameplay and then and out again. And so I've been doing that. To help as well so thanks for watching thanks for listening to me ramble on look forward to the next chlorine the professor and thanks for watching